Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Rona Exo, and on this channel, I create fashion, travel, lifestyle content. So, if you're into that stuff, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. As you can see behind me, I have a different setup today. It was my birthday a few days ago, so I had the whole balloons and all of that. So, I thought I'd just utilize the backdrop today. But the first area I'm going to be talking about is the theory test. I've got notes on my phone just so I don't miss anything out for you guys. So the theory test costs £23 and you can book it through the Gov website. Make sure you don't use these fake websites because you will actually not get your money back. So make sure you use the Gov website. I'll put all the links you need in the description box. And it's split into two parts. So you have like the theory question which is about general um, driving on the road and road signs. And then you have the hazard which is where you watch a clip and then you click when you can see the hazard forming. And that consists of 75 questions and you need to get 45 right. And for the theory questions, it's a total of 50 and you need to get 43 right. Now, I passed the first time, which was amazing. Yes, yes, yes. And yeah, I was just so happy, like, everything the first time, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I did that. But the app that I used to help me, help me, help me, help me, help me so, so, so much was the official DVS a app which is like blue i'll put it on the screen so you guys can see it the thing is that app is made by the people who make the theory test which is why i tell people to download it because you actually see the same questions when i went to that test i saw the same questions but what i did was i would do the practice test that they had on there so the 50 questions i would always do that always do that i didn't really read the book that much um only for like the road signs and stuff like that but i'm telling you if you do the practice test You'll start getting used to the questions so the more you do it you'll be able to answer them quicker and then you'll start recognizing and memorizing the questions so that's exactly what i did and i gave myself a two week block to like learn everything um i booked my test and i was like okay cool i'm not gonna waste my 23 pounds so i have to practice within this two weeks but i wouldn't suggest you just sit in there for like hours and hours trying to learn it i would just do it whenever i was free if i was on my way to somewhere if I was on the bus, if I was just chilling, I would just do the 50 questions and then that was it. Once you have your provisionals, you can start doing your practical lessons. But for me, I did my theory first, then my practical lessons. After my theory, I started doing my practical lessons. And that is where you basically learn how to drive on the road. I started in 2018, October, and then I did my test in 2019, April. So it was about five five six months or so and it was literally so good i actually enjoyed it because my instructor was good and that's another thing you need to get a good instructor because if you don't you're just wasting your money and then they won't teach how to drive properly but my instructor was very good as i said all the information will be down below in the description box this is the card that i had when i was doing my driving lessons and they recorded like all the information in here i don't know if you can see it but all the information was in here so I did around 23 lessons and that was once a week but leading up to my test I did it more often just because I needed to be 100% ready for it and during these lessons obviously you learn how to drive, how to reverse, all of that stuff and the thing is my instructor understood the way that I learned so he would actually draw out the ropes and then give me like toy cars to place on the board so I can see like where I position my position the car which is really really good and he would make me write down stuff so it can like stick in my brain which I 100% recommend um you know getting a driving instructor that understands the way that you learn because it will help you and it will make the process way more fun and easier to go through so after I did my practical lessons I booked the practical test which cost 62 pounds so once you book the practical test you use the same golf website don't use the fake ones um, you obviously book a test and then you work towards it however the thing to know is you have to have a car for your test so usually most people use their um, driving schools car and that's what I did but you have to pay to use it so I paid around £100 to rent the car to use for my test and plus I paid the practical um, lesson, like the actual practical test which was £62. So I spent £162 for my practical lessons and then for my actual driving lessons I spent around, let's see, so 25 times 24, 
So around £600. So I spent £600 on my practical lessons and then £162 booking the actual practical test and renting the car. So that's what? £762. Yeah, so quite a lot of money. So you need to make sure that you have money because you don't want to start, then stop. So make sure you're ready to like fully, fully, fully go for it. Well, during your practical test, your invigilator will, you know, your examiner will ask you, show me, tell me questions. And that's where they ask you like, how do you check your lights are working? How do you beep the horn? How do you turn on the demister? How do you um, check the oils and all of that? But I will put a link down below to all the questions that you'll get asked. Well, you'll get asked two of them, but I'll put a link to all the questions. So for me, on my test, the lady asked me, how do I beat the horn, which is so easy. Like, did, did you <laughs> press the horn? So we thank God for that. And then the second question she asked me was, how do you turn on the demon start? And she did that while I was driving, which was calm. And then we also used the sat nav for 20 minutes. So during that time, the, the examiner does not speak to you. It's literally just a sat-nav. So you need to make sure that you understand how to use a sat-nav and that you're listening. Um, and then after that 20 minutes, then your examiner will start speaking to you and telling you, turn left, turn right, do parallel parking, do this, do that. Um, and yeah, so my test was like pretty easy to be fair in terms of the questions and what she asked me to do. So that was calm. Um, and I did my test in the morning, which was good. I feel like in the morning is way better, you know, just get out, out of the way and done with. The whole process wasn't too bad. I mean, yeah, you just you just get on with it, do what you need to do so you can be skirt, 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 skirting, do you know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, so that's the theory and the driving practical lessons and testing and all of that. After you've done your practical test and you've passed you now have to think about getting the car what kind what type of car you want the cost of petrol insurance tax MAT all of that but don't worry because I'm gonna discuss it with you so the first thing is the actual car now I didn't buy my car we thank God my dad actually got it for me which means I saved around three thousand to four thousand pounds because yeah I got the car for free now that's all good when you get the car and all of that but you don't have to worry about insurance tax mot and all of that stuff so the first thing i dealt with was my insurance and um i just went online looked at the different um prices so i went on like go compare market um what's that meerkat that, that one and just loads of different ones trying to find the best deals However, as we know, if you're young and you start driving, they'll ask you if you want a black box. So in terms of the black box, it basically tracks your driving. So it can tell you when you've left your house, when you've come back, which roads you were on, what speed you were doing, um, how well you brake, all of that stuff. It literally has a tracker on you. And in terms of like the cost, it affects the cost whether you, whether or not you have a black box because if you don't have a black box it's obviously going to be more expensive because they can't track you but if you do have the black box it's going to be cheaper because they can keep tabs on you now i personally got the black box just because of the cost like i wasn't trying to pay 300 pounds 200 pounds no way and with the black box i was paying 176 but the only the thing is i had it for a year and then after that i was like yeah Nah, you gotta go because when I tell you, it's literally, it's not the worst thing, but it's really annoying because you have to follow all the speed limits. So if the road is 20, you have to do 20. But the thing is, yeah, you become a hazard on the road because you're doing 20 because everyone's doing around 25 to 30. So you're there doing your 20, everyone's beeping their, <laughs> everyone's beeping their horns at you and all of that. So it can get overwhelming, but in terms of cost it was way more effective than me not getting the box so i opted for the box however if you can afford it you know spend a little extra money don't get the box if you ask me don't get it if you can afford it but if you can't just get the box some people's um boxes they actually give them a curfew so you can you can't be out after 10 p.m 
and I was just like, I can get a box, yes, but you're not going to give me a curfew because how can you tell me that I've got a car, I'm paying for insurance, and then I can't drive at this time? Like, who do you actually think you are? Like, how can you actually tell me I can't do this? No. So I just opted for one that didn't have a curfew, but obviously all the other features that I mentioned um, not long ago. I did mention that you have to do all the speed limits. And that literally means if the road is 20, you have to do 20. If the road is 30, you have to do 30. So I remember when I, I think it was the first or second week of me like driving, I was going towards the Blackpool Tunnel and it goes from 50 to 30 in like a short amount of time. And as I was leading up to it, I didn't actually clock, so I didn't get to slow down quick enough. And I just received a call and they're like, hi, is this Rona? And I'm like, yeah. And then they're like, oh, um, you know, we saw that you were um, speeding towards the Blackpool Tunnel. And I was just like, what day was this? And they told me the day and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I saw it, but I just didn't, I wasn't able to slow down quick enough. So they gave me a warning. So you have to be very, very, very careful when you're driving the Blackpool because you might get tickets, you might get warnings. And if you get warnings and tickets all the time, then they'll literally just cancel your insurance so you need to make sure that you're on job with your um insurance so after the year was done i took the box out <laughs> i took the box out because my insurance had obviously gone down because i was driving for a year and um yeah i was like i can't have those restrictions over me anymore so i was like skirt, skirt, skirt. time to get out it's time to get this black box out and my insurance went down to 129 which is what I'm paying now so before it was 176 and then now it's 129 so you can do the maths it's clearly cheaper so I didn't mind paying that price because anything to get that box out to be fair like I was gonna do it and if I kept the box the box in then my insurance would have been 90 pounds but as i said i would rather not have the box so i don't mind paying the extra money on top of my insurance so yeah that's my insurance and you can pay for your insurance in one go so you can pay the 1000 or 2000 something in one go or you can split it into monthly installments which is what i do personally when you're getting your insurance you actually have to pay a deposit and my deposit was 400 pounds so make sure you have your deposit money ready as well as like your monthly payments as well so yeah just thought i'd add that in you have to think about road tax which allows you to drive on the road and for me my road tax i have the paper here my road tax is 20 pounds for the whole year and yeah which is pretty pretty cheap like so cheap so i literally just paid that one year 20 pounds done whereas some people's cars they cost um 100 pounds for or more or less so for me my mum was 20 pounds which is pretty good can't complain so t which you do every year and that stands for ministry of transport yeah ministry of transport and it's basically where you, they do like a check of your car to make sure it's suitable to drive on the road so they check your seat belt um just a general like check of the car and the cost of that for me is 39.99 and it depends on the garage that you go to because at my one they charge me 39.99 so it just depends but yeah everybody requires that and you do it once a year then you have service which is um like a deep check of your car where they check the oils they um check the general like health of your car they check your wheels they check everything i literally have a sheet here with everything that they have so they check the oil, the oil filter, air filter, cabin filter, spark plug, and water fluid and antifreeze. So they check quite a lot and you have to do this once a year as well. So your MOT and your um, service you can do once a year and that cost me £190. So that's with V18 and everything. So it cost me £190. So as you can see, the price builds up. So I'm saying to you, like, if you can afford a car, then you get it. But if you can't afford it, like, just just leave it alone because once the costs start creeping on, creeping up on you, yeah, 
there's nothing you can do you literally have to cough up the money so <laughs> so yeah make sure that you you're in a position where you can run a car so yeah that's the service mot and tax so in terms of petrol my car costs were i was about to say one pound <laughs> i wish it costs 41 pounds to fill or roughly like 41 pounds to fill which means it will cost me 82 pounds roughly to fill every month because i i usually top up like every two to three weeks depending on how much driving i do but usually i drive a lot so i'm saying um every two to three weeks so that is 82 pounds on petrol a month right and then times that by 12 let's see so we've got 82 oh, 82 times 12 984 pounds on petrol guys like deep it nearly uh 1k on petrol like but yeah if you want to drive you gotta do these things so make sure you're prepared so so yeah that is how much my car costs and my car is one liter so imagine if you had a 1.2 1.6 two liters all of these big cars they're spending money on petrol so yeah think wisely about the car that you go through okay that's all i gotta say <laughs> i get my car washed like the ins no the outside washed around let's say once a month and then twice a month if i'm feeling generous basically i can't lie <laughs> i can't lie yeah i don't wash my car on the outside like that but i clean it inside at home because i have like those car cleaner things so i just do that at home. i don't really need to spend extra money unless i want to then i will but i don't have to so let's say a car wash costs around 15 pounds and if you wash your car twice a twice a month that's 30 pounds a month so that's petrol is around 84 pounds 82 pounds a month and then you have um car wash which is like 30 pounds a month so slowly 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 the prices are like adding up so as i said you need to be prepared for this because it's gonna hit you like a ton of bricks period <laughs> so that's all of the things you need to do before getting your license and then after getting your license what you need to pay for what you need to do and all of that so I'm now going to be answering some questions that I received. I asked everyone on my Snapchat and my Instagram to send me questions. So if you're not already following me on there, make sure you are. My Instagram is RonaXO and my Snapchat is simply underscore Rona. And yeah, let's get right into the questions that people asked me. So the first one was, what age was I when I got my car? I was 19 when I got my car. I actually got it in summer, so July, but I actually passed my test in April. So I didn't drive for like a few months. Um, am I trying to buy a new car? No, I'm not trying to buy a new car at the moment because I'm content and humble with what I've got at the moment and I'm still in uni so probably after uni yeah, when I've got a new job and all of that then yeah, I'll get a new car. Um, has my car had any problems? No, my car has been perfectly fine and I have a Volkswagen up so yeah, if you're interested in a Volkswagen up then you can just look it up. Um, any modifications? No. I'm, I guess you're, you're talking about like tinted windows, anything I've done on the inside, stuff like that. No, I don't really need tinted windows at the moment. And in terms of modifications as well, I got those um, neon car lights where it can light up the passenger and the drivers in the front, like their feet and that. I got it for Christmas, but I just need to get it installed. But other than that, that is the only modifications that I'll be doing. Um, the next one is... Are black boxes really worth it? Spoke about that. If you have the money to not get a black box, don't get it. If you're looking for like a cheaper option, then get it. But just be aware of like the rules that come with black boxes. Um, when did I get my license? I was 19. Well, I literally just turned 19 when I got my license. Um, how did you find hill starting? So if you drive manual, which is what I do, I don't think I mentioned it, but I do drive manual. Hill starts are the worst. But anyways, you get used to it as you, you, the longer you drive. But in the beginning, they're absolutely the worst thing ever. Um, I remember I was coming from work one time and there's like a bit of a hill and I was at the front. And every time I would like prepare to go, 
I'll just stall. I definitely stalled about five times and there was like a long queue of cars behind me. Everyone was beeping me, driving back around me. It was terrible and I was so embarrassed. <laughs> but I was like a new driver, so I guess it's calm. But yeah, um, they teach you to put the car into neutral and then put the handbrake up and then find the biting point. But I do that if there's traffic so if i actually have to stop and my feet gets tired of holding the button point then i do that but if i'm close to like the front i just hold the button point and when i'm ready to go i just press the gas but you need to make sure that you get the right button point because if you don't you'll stall so yeah it's just about finding the right button point i guess um what else is there um insurance i've spoken about the price of the car i don't actually know but i gave like a rough estimate um and yeah i think that was all the questions that i received i received more but i obviously answered them during this video so i don't need to go over them again but if you do have any more questions and i haven't answered it please do comment down in the comment section because i'll definitely answer them and yes thank you for watching this video and i hope you learned something and don't forget to hit the subscribe button we're nearly on 300 so hit the subscribe button and tell a friend tell a friend thank you <laughs> bye guys